Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we do my Champions League 23-24 season semifinal prediction. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. And please remember to stay to the very end of this video to hear my complete thoughts on all both these matchups. So let's start with the first game, which we got here. It is uh, Bayern versus Real Madrid. Bayern Munich, man. This season, Bayern have been very much underwhelming. Thomas Tuchel has got this team into a position where they've lost the league title for the first time in 11 years. And Bayern this season haven't been great. You know what the weird thing, though, is? Even though they lost the league title, this is the best Bayern have done the Champions League since they won the Champions League. It's been three quarterfinal exits in a row. They have now finally made the semifinals for the first time since they won the treble. And I look at this Bayern team. This team looks very much underwhelmed. Conrad Leimer, Gretzka midfield against the likes of a Bellingham, Kamavinga, Modric, Cruz. I'm sorry to say that is frightening to say the least. I don't even get me started with the defense. Eric Dyer and Delit versus Alaba, Chuomeni, Militao, and Rudiger. Bayern Munich, man, it's going to be a very tall task. And I know people are going to tell me, oh, Tuchel has done a great job. He has a good record against Real Madrid. I think he's only lost one game against Real Madrid ever in his entire career and that kind of stuff. Guys, things are different, you know. And I look at this Bayern team, Tuchel this season, I've just not been impressed. I've really not been impressed with Bayern this season whatsoever in the Champions League. I feel like they just got him by. They just got him by. And now this is where our real true challenge is. Because let's be real, guys. Real Madrid is going to be the toughest team Bayern have played against throughout the their history throughout the season and we know Bayern Munich has the hatred towards Real Madrid over the last couple of times Real Madrid has played against Bayern there's been controversies and everything and it's been a fairly even it's been a fairly hectic matchup you know um and I think for Bayern in particular this is obviously European heritage because you know both these teams have played against each other so many times throughout the years I believe Real Madrid actually has a better head-to-head and for Bayern Munich, man, I think the key for them to win this match is to win the game at the Allianz Arena. They have to win the first second at Germany. Because if they don't win the first second in Germany, hey, they can, uh, the Bernabeu, you're not winning at the Bernabeu. At best, maybe a draw, but there's no way Bayern's winning the Bernabeu. You know? And I think for Harry Kane, man, this is your opportunity to show up here. Because I'm telling you this right now, guys. If Kane can get Bayern Munich to the Champions League final, that will be Kane's biggest biggest achievement in his career biggest achievement because he would have guided Bayern to their first Champions League final in a long time since 2020 and this will also be a big against a quality opponent Real Madrid because we know Real Madrid is one of the best teams in the world you know Musiala versus Bellingham that narrative is also in the line you know the two um the two players the two Bundesliga players that battled it out on the final day of last season you know, now they're re reuniting against each other, you know. And obviously, you know, uh, Bayern Munich have, um, you know. And I, I just think it's going to be interesting because, you know, obviously Alfonso Davis against his future club, potentially Real Madrid. That's also something to look forward to. And I think for Bayern Munich, man, two guys got to get his tactics right. Because I look at I look at Real Madrid. Real Madrid this season, Carlo Ancelotti's done a fantastic job with this team. This team has been struggling a lot this season with injuries and everything. And this team has somehow managed to find themselves in a Champions League semifinal to, on the course to win La Liga with uh, so many injuries. And Real Madrid have had it against them. You know, and I think players look up for, for Real Madrid, obviously. You know, the likes of, obviously, um, Vinicius Jr., obviously Bellingham as well. Bellingham against Bayern, uh, obviously a former Dortmund player. Tony Cruz, a former uh, Bayern player as well. Um, you know, he would have something to prove. And then obviously you got uh, Rudiger as well. You know, he's a German player. So um, he's going to be one to look out for. Then obviously you got Rodrigo. Um, then obviously you got Kamavinga as well. Like Real Madrid, th like the team is just perfect, you know. And I think um, I really like this Real Madrid team. The only thing I am a bit concerned with Real Madrid, and this has been something that's been kind of been a bit, uh, a bit alarming the last couple of the games I've seen is that Real Madrid are not very clinical in the final third. I think they miss a bit too many chances in the final third. And against a Bayern team that can be clinical at times, 
they have to take their they have to make their chances count. So for Real Madrid and for Carlo Ancelotti, I was actually looking at this before the game before the game, guys. Carlo Ancelotti's got six wins against Bayern and only two draws. He's never lost against Bayern ever in a competitive game. Now people are gonna bring out 2012. Well, technically that was a draw. That uh technically he didn't lose. So yeah, it's gonna be very interesting for Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid are the favorites for me. Look what how they did against Manchester City, the way they're able to defend as a team, how disciplined they were. And I just think for Real Madrid, man, they're just too much going forward for this team. Bayern Munich for me are way too shaky in the midfield, way too shaky in the defense. And I just don't know if Harry Kane's gonna show up. I just don't know if he is. And you know, obviously players like Anabre, Sane have to turn up. And I just I have no guarantees. I have no guarantees with that, you know. And Carlo Ancelotti, we know how good he is in the Champions League, his winning record. I believe he's won the most Champions Leagues ever as a manager. Um, and so now, it you know, we know how Real Madrid is going to do. So I, I have Real Madrid to advance the final. They're clearly the superior team. And, um, yeah, I just think for Real Madrid, they're the heavy favorites, heavy favorites. Moving on, next we have, it is Dortmund versus PSG. Now, this is an interesting one, guys. Because Borussia Dortmund coming in this season... A lot of people said, ah, oh, Barista Dorman, they're going to probably go out the round of 16. They'll probably go out the round of 16 exit as usual. Instead, Dorman have defied the odds and not only have made it the quarterfinals, they made it the semifinals. And they were in a group of death. They were in one of the most difficult groups ever in Champions League history with, you know, Milan, Dorman, and Newcastle and PSG. And they managed to top the group. Um, and they only lost one game in the group stage, which was to PSG. I like what this Dortmund team is doing. I think players are going for this Dortmund team. Obviously, the likes of Brandt, he's been amazing. Then, obviously, you got uh, Sancho as well. You know, then, obviously, you got Hummels as well, who's been excellent. Cobal as well. Uh, Fulkrug as well. This Dortmund team looks very well solid. The only thing I'm a bit critical about Dortmund is defensively, they're very, very shaky. I think they, they concede a bit too much goals for me in the back. And that's why I worry for Dortmund is against a PSG team that's very electric on the counterattack. The likes of Kylian Bop, the likes of Barcola, the likes of Dembele. How are they going to do against that Dortmund defense, right? Um, and we see how PSG, the, how they're able to uh, improve. You know, I think Vitinha had a great game against Barcelona, both games. And the thing for PSG, my only concern with PSG is the lack of clinicality for this team. Because say what you will about, uh, uh, say what you will, Mbappe is the most clinical player PSG have. Because Dembele isn't clinical. Barcola isn't clinical. Vitinha isn't, you know, and that's what I make main concern with PSG is that they're just not really clinical with their the goal scoring opportunities, you know. And I think for PSG in particular, what's going to be very interesting for Luis Enrique is that how is he because that front three for me has to start. It, you can't roll in with Gonzalo Ramos or Kuala Moani or these kind of players. And it has to be that front three. That front three is the best, you know. And I think for PSG, what they need to do is look at Dortmund, try to expose Dortmund, because we know PSG will be playing the counterattack, and we know Dortmund's going to probably play with a lot of possession, because remember, the first leg is in Germany. The second leg is in Paris. So I think for Dortmund, they have to take all the initiative they can to try to win the first leg at home. Because if Dortmund can win the first leg at home, ooh, the second leg could be very interesting, guys. It makes it very interesting, because if PSG gets a draw or wins it away in Dortmund, the tie is basically done, in my opinion, because I just don't see how Dortmund could win away in Paris. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that pans out. You know, Cherez versus Enrique, obviously, the two teams did play against each other in the group stage. You know, the one in Paris ended 2-0 to PSG, and the one in Dortmund finished 1-1 draw. I actually think Dortmund's a better team. I actually think I actually have Dortmund to advance, just because I feel like they're more well-rounded as a team. PSG, for me, they look good at times. I've seen some improvements. But I feel like this PSG team don't have enough collectively to beat a Dorman team like this, you know. And I feel like Dorman's gonna be super motivated, super, um, super excited and super motivated to be up there for the occasion. And I just feel like for me, Dorman have done amazing. You know, you have to give credit what this Dorman team have done. This is the best that Dorman have done in the Champions League since 2013. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you guys agree with my predictions? Do you guys disagree? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And yeah. Please remember, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.